All right, material prices are insane. A one by two Southern Yellow Pine, $8 a piece. This two by 12 here, $22. I'm gonna take the track saw and mill my own one by twos. Time for a new blade. We end up with 12 one by twos from this process. Uh, cost savings of about $74 over buying Southern Yellow Pine. These are uh, Douglas fir. They've got a nice straight grain and probably six of them are really high quality straight pieces. I got a whole stack of foam here. Now the plan is to work on the roof panels, the back wall, and the roof spars. Here I'm cutting the kerf cuts for that last section of curve on the front. I space these about a half inch apart for this size radius. You can see when I'm pushing this around the shop, uh, it's really nice to have those sacrificial runners on the bottom. This is an off cut, uh, about a quarter inch thick of that two inch XPS foam, and you can really see the flexibility. I'm cutting the rough radius for the edges of the roof panel. This process creates an absolute mess. Here I'm using a power planer to remove the bulk of the material for the rear overhang spoiler thing. And now I've switched over to a piece of 40 grit sandpaper on a sanding block to really dial in the details. to the top side. A small radius like this with the 40 grit paper goes relatively quickly. Here's a couple beauty shots of this. Uh, it's not quite complete yet, it'll get some further refinement before it gets fiberglassed. Now I'm bonding on that last bit of radius for the roof section. Uh, I'm using epoxy thickened with 3M glass micro balloons here. Uh, thickens it up to a nice uh, consistency so it doesn't run out of vertical surfaces and fills you know, small voids, that sort of thing. A little bit of our sketchy track saw set up here, but the end of our curve is not quite vertical, so we're gonna cut that. And it'll get rid of this little bit of extra in the middle.
Pretty stoked on the way these spar pockets are gonna come out. We'll fare this lip in here. Now we're gonna add three more. So we'll have a total of four across the roof. I think that's gonna add some good strength. Here I'm making a saw cut on either side of the spar locations uh, to the depth of the spar and I'll go back off camera with the router and hog out the rest of the material. Need about a dozen more cats. They'd have this place cleaned up in no time. A couple more beauty shots of the roof with those spar pockets complete and the spars fit. Should be a good strong assembly. Make good use of this real estate up top here. This next series of clips and still images covers the production of the hard points that I use to attach the sacrificial runners on the bottom and I'll be using these in various other locations for mount points. I cut these out of scrap 3 quarter inch oak plywood, although I don't know that that's necessary. Uh, and the backside gets a relief cut so that the T-nut sits flush. Uh, I'm using quarter 20 T-nuts here. You'll notice in this still that the T-nut does not have a relief cut in the back side. This was the initial prototype. I used the same size hole saw uh, to cut the foam to make the pocket where this hard point sits. This is the shot of the bottom panel before it's glassed and I believe it has 15 of these hard points total. After they've been glassed in, uh, this is a shot of the bottom with the sacrificial runners attached. And here's another still shot of the bottom panel uh, with all the runners in place. You can see that uh, when you move this thing around uh, across the concrete, sliding it in and out of the truck, that those will wear first and they're a replaceable item. We'll be using the same style of hard point in the roof in various locations yet to be determined. And those will serve as mounts for uh, solar panels, any roof accessories, and my ski box that's hiding up there in the attic somewhere. We opted for a single door here instead of a double door ambulance style. The plan is that the door will swing up vertically and that'll give us some good shade in our uh, pull-out kitchen here. This is a side profile shot of that same door opening and this kind of illustrates the different elevations. So with that weather stripping in place we'll have about an inch to play with for the door and using gravity you know the water's not going to want to come out of this lip and then climb back around this weather strip. I'll need to do some shaping of the foam on this bottom side here. Ideally this will create a nice flow path for water so that'll get kind of a chamfer cut into it.
Now we're looking at the inside of that rear door panel. Uh, the layup you just watched is covering that. I used all scraps in this. Uh, I don't remember a, a total layer count or anything. Uh, the flange itself, I think, is uh, eight plies of seven ounce glass. Uh, but that's really just a guess. That's gonna do it for this episode. I think we have about 99% of all the foam shaping, all the figuring out together at this point. There's gonna be a little head scratching left to do yet on that back door, but I'll bring you along for that. Looking forward to moving on to some of the funner stuff. Uh, the slide out kitchen, some solar, uh, the roof rack, that sort of thing. And really looking to getting out there and using this thing. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, put them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And until next time, we're out of here.